This is Satisfactory, episode number six. Today, we get to start powering up, turning on, and using the starter base here, because last episode, we set up some coal generators, which have increased our power by quite a bit, and it's now totally passive. I don't have to run over there and babysit it, like we have had to do for the biofuel generators, which aren't down there. We can start ignoring the biofuel. Thank goodness, don't have to chop down any more trees. Our power is over there. I'm not sure if the buildings would render from this distance. There's a cliff in the way, and they're below the cliff, but they're off in that direction, and they're providing a pretty good amount of power, but they are not providing the most amount of power they can provide because we need to, well, we need to upgrade some things. We need to upgrade some belts and our miners. So this episode, we're going to start by unlocking a miner Mark II. Let me not hit that platform. Let me hit the green goo. We're going to unlock the Miner Mark II. It's going to get us a few other things, some building supplies, uh, different building parts of various complexities. It's in Tier 4, Advanced Steel Production, Miner Mark II right there, and then these other building guys right there. Go ahead and do that. Put in the things. There we are. Button! Hooray! Milestone reached. Improved miner included to double extraction rates and improve efficiency of new pipelines. Cool. A collection of new, more complex parts is yep. now available for crafting. Uh huh. An additional project part can now be constructed. Further progress to the next phase is now possible. Nice. Okay, is she done? She is done. So, we just unlocked Miner Mark 2. Miner Mark 1's right here. A normal extraction rate, 60 per minute, and it goes down for impure nodes and up for pure nodes. Takes iron plates and concrete. Miner Mark 2 is double the speed. It takes those frames, the steel pipes, and I think those are reinforced steel beams. The reinforced steel beams we're not making yet, but everything else we can make right away. And I can set that up. Last episode, I also picked up some quartz because it was under the foundations for the coal power plant. I've seen these different rocks around the world and different rocks of different types. There's quartz. There's bauxite. This is, a, I'm assuming, aluminum. Bauxite is aluminum. I have also picked up caterium, which is gold. Bam. You gonna talk? Oh, I thought the voice would talk. Well, anyway, I wanted to see if there was a research tree for that. Maybe that's just uh, a default unlock in tier 5 or 6 or 7 or whatever. Here's more Caterium. The one that I've seen around here that I haven't picked up that might have a research tree. It might just be unlocked in the, uh, the Sky Pillar thing and the hub is sulfur and i think there is a sulfur rock it's over there close to the space elevator let's go pick that up maybe we'll check this one this looks like caterium caterium yeah here it is all right research tree or no Data shows this oh is a mix yep of sulfide and sulfate minerals okay it could be an indication of recent volcanic activity a new research tree exploring volatile self-defense applications can now be accessed in the MAM. Cool. Okay, so I stored some of them here. Let me take those out. Let's take a look at the MAM. We have a sulfur tree, a quartz tree, a caterium tree. Oh, wow. Okay, I wasn't expecting that. And three seconds. All right, if it's only three seconds, let's do that now. Okay. The analysis complete. Please choose a new node. Research finished. New resource added to the resource scanner. Oh. Caterium. Cool. I don't think we need that yet, but that's interesting that we get the resource scanner addition like that. Oh, there is some. 600, five, 600 meters that way. Eight something that way. All right, that's cool. What's the next thing say? Caterium ingot. Three seconds. All right, we get new technologies. Okay, so that's going to be an alternative to copper for probably some higher tech computery stuff. There's the quick wire. Three seconds. Oh, we have to use the ingots for that. All right, fine. So let's take a look at the quartz. Are you three seconds? You are. Very nice. Okay, complete. Yes. Can we scan for it? Yes, we can. 
Awesome. Raw quartz. I'm going to guess that raw quartz is pretty rare. I think I've maybe seen a quartz node once or twice, and that's it. Okay, so probably none in range. Oh, never mind. I take that back. 1,300 meters over there. And 1,300 in that direction. Okay, so there is some. Not too far away. Closer than the coal we're using anyway, The for the power. Let's see, that was quartz. All right, next we get what? Quartz crystal or silica. And I don't have enough quartz to do both of these. Let's see this so I reveal the next section of the tree. Bam, done. Oh, that, a new thing we can make. Crystal oscillator, which takes that quartz, whatever, quartz crystal, and uh, reinforced plates. Okay, that's cool. Let's see, we did catarium. I need to make ingots for the rest. Let's look at sulfur. I've only got 15 of that. I only found one of those. I found multiple of the others. Uh-huh. Can we scan for sulfur? I'm gonna guess. Yes. Black powder. Oh, that's fun. Coal and sulfur. I need 25 and 50. All right, is there any sulfur nearby? I think those are the only trees that are brand new. Okay, but that's something to look forward to. And I don't... Is there sulfur? Yeah, there is sulfur. One kilometer in that direction. 1,400 meters that direction. So, over here at the coal power plant, hopefully I have enough materials to upgrade everything. We'll start with the miners, Mark II. Right there, upgraded in place. And that one upgraded in place. So those will now do, let's check, let's just click on the machine. It should double in speed. Okay, so this impure node has doubled from 30 to 60 items per second, which is how much a tier one belt can hold, and the same thing with that one. Here are the belts. Let's look at them. Tier 1, 60 resources per minute. Tier 2, 120 per minute. Tier 3, 270 per minute. So that means right here I've got to upgrade that to Tier 2. I already did that, actually. This is Tier 1. That is Tier 2. They look a little bit different. This one's got a bigger light. This one's got smaller three tiny lights. So up to that point. And then this one is going to be bringing in 120. So we need to upgrade that to Tier 3, which I already did. I already did that. I upgraded that to Tier 3. And you can see the difference between the Tier 2 and the Tier 3. Tier 3 has got big lights. This got medium lights. Tier 1, tiny little lights. I did miscalculate a little bit. I thought we could use Tier 4 belts so that we could unlock them quickly enough to run the coal down this line. But that's going to be a while. That's not till Tier 5 or 6. And so I reconfigured things. Our pure node is going to run the second half. And our one normal node over there... And our two impure nodes will run the first half, so they are merging like that. Did I already? I did not recombine. Let's see, this should be 120. This can be tier 2, right? 60, 60, 120. No, and then an extra 120. So 240 items going down this direction. Yeah, we need tier 3 belts. All right, so let's just run some tier 3 belts. And at a certain point, enough coal should be taken off that we can drop this to uh, Tier 2 and then Tier 1. I'm not really worried about that math. I'm just going to upgrade the whole thing. So I don't have to do any extra math. It is not that many materials anyway. Alright, and then that is the cutoff point where they swap over. So I'll start upgrading Tier 3 on the way back. And then we can run over to the other miners and upgrade those. So, way back here are our other two miners. This is a normal node, and that up there is a pure node. It's doing 60 items per minute. Now it's doing 120 items per minute, so we need to upgrade that belt to a tier 2. Logistics. Oh, actually, we need to change the belts a little bit, so let's wait for a second to do that. Let's upgrade the guy up here. I don't have a way to get up here except to run along the belt. So this is a pure node. It's doing 120 per minute. And then production, uh, minor mark two. Can't afford, oh, you know what? I think we have to deconstruct it and then get the, um, the portable miner back. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, I thought we could upgrade in place and it would consider the materials of what we're upgrading from. I guess it doesn't. 
Miner Mark II. Oh, was my inventory full? My inventory was full. So that means... Okay, can I drop some items? Oops. Let's see. Oh, what I can do. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're fixed the situation. Organization. Personal chest. Bam. Actually, put that coal in there. That'll make up the difference. Picked up a bunch of coal. Reworking belts. Grab that to get rid of that thing. It might not... I might have uh, not been able to see it once I built the miner, so I wanted to get rid of it first. Go back to production. Miner Mark II. And then rotate it so that it is facing my belt. Like that. Then we have to give it power again. There we go. And then it's going to need... Whoop, okay. It's going to need conveyor belt Mark III's. Pretty sure. Because it's running at 240 items per second. And Mark II's only carry 120 items per second. Give me all that. Deconstruct that. Yeah, inventory is pretty full. It might fill up with coal actually doing this last little step. Because we have to separate these two guys onto two separate belts. So... Delete that. Yep, dropping items. Okay. Delete that and then run a Mark III belt from there up to there. And that'll run down that way. Let me make an organizational chest right here on the corner. And I will just dump all that coal I've picked up to get this guy out of the way. Grab it, and then it disappears. So I need to get rid of this because I need to make a little curve. So we're going to make the curve like this. That is straight on, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. All right. Like that. Only that needs to be actually tier 2 all the way down. And I just made a tier 1 because that's what's on my belt. So let's upgrade that. Tier 2, tier 2. Alright, can I pick up all that coal? Yeah. Okay, and as I replace the tier 1 belts as I upgrade them, it should just swap the items in my inventory from iron plates to reinforced plates or steel beams. And we just need... We need to make sure... Man, look at the items that belong. We need to make sure that uh, I've upgraded them all the way. Tier 2 for the bottom, tier 3 up at the top. Alright, I think that looks good. Just a little bit left here to upgrade to go up to the new section. Let me hop off here so I can see. Need to upgrade that. That that and that little bit right there okay that should all be tier three this should all be tier two i think i did all of it running down around under there so this is the normal node it's going to go there with the two impure nodes and run the half of our coal generators on that side and then the pure node is going to run on its own the first half Back at the base, I've set up some Miner Mark IIs on some unused ore patches around the area so we can get this base up and running before we have to decommission this so we can keep making more stuff to make more base until this thing is self-sufficient. So there is an iron patch right there with a Mark II miner, and that's going in right there for steel ingots. There is a iron patch out there, and that's going all the way down here and around and into there for iron ingots. Over here is a copper patch which is going right in there for copper ingots. We're going to start with this guy and work our way from left to right. Let's plug everything in. Let's jump off. I did add up all the machines that I have built up here so far, and based on the display, what they say they draw as far as power is concerned, once we plug it in, and once everything is actually working simultaneously, this building at the moment is going to draw 600... No, 400... 65, 465 additional megawatts of power for our base. We're currently consuming somewhere between two to 400 based on demand because these machines sometimes go idle. And we have two gigawatts of capacity left over, so should be fine. Should have plenty of power. Let's plug all that in. And let's plug in our copper miner. That is a normal node with a tier two miner, so 120 items per minute. This is a tier 3 belt, and we do need to fill the belt. 270 ore per minute is what we want to fuel all these smelters. Once we've confirmed everything works, we can add more copper sources to fill the belt so that the base runs in capacity. 
All right, here comes the ore, splitting in nine and hitting all these smelters. I keep wanting to call them foundries. The foundries are just for the steel. And then they go down the line, they merge, and then they go around this corner and they hit this lift. Tier three lift. So the lift comes out right here, and then it gets split into, and half stays on this floor for copper sheets in these machines. That line goes down there. And it hits this conveyor lift, it goes down, and then it gets split multiple times so that it hits all the machines. And then they will make the copper sheets, which we need for pipes and that kind of stuff. And that will all go down there to the next destination. The other half of the copper ingots get split, and they go up a lift to the next floor, which ends up right here. Then they get split again, and they go down either side of this production line to make wire. You can see the wire coming out of the machines here. Let's look at how they're split. It's kind of the similar thing we've been doing. We are splitting in multiples of two or three so that we get the most bang for our buck from our splitters. They go down there, they get split. They hit the splitter, they get split. They go in the machines, and they make the wire. Then the output all merges down through the middle and heads off to the next area. The wire is mostly getting used to make cable after this point and there it goes it hits a splitter and then it basically goes down either side of the wire layout and it does the same thing it gets split to go to all machines evenly and then it gets merged down the middle and reaches this point to this configuration of splitters and mergers here this row is splitters and then that row there is mergers this is a overflow doohickey thingy i don't know the official name but basically what it does you have a main input. This is from our production line. You have a main output right there, and then you have an overflow output over there. So most of our materials is going to end up going through here, but it is currently backed up because this belt doesn't go anywhere yet. And so the configuration is outputting over right here. I'll show you. This is the overflow output. This will go to storage so that we can grab things to continue building. And I have a similar layout for all the different production lines. This is basically how it works. Main input goes to this first splitter, and it gets split in half. Half of the total output from all of our cable producers hits this merger and goes this way. The other half hits this splitter, and then it repeats the process. So 25% hits this merger, combines with that 50%. So now we've got 75% of all of our output going to this guy. And then the rest goes to another pair, and then it gets split again. So 25% gets split into 12.5% and 12.5%. This 12.5% merges with the 25 and the 50, so now we've got 87%. It's just basic fractions, basically. We're splitting and merging, and all of the merges go that way, and all the splitters go that way. The more pairs we add, the higher percentage of items end up in the main output, and the lower percentage of items end up in the overflow. As long as uh, that belt isn't backed up, it is not backed up, or it is backed up right now, so this belt is full as well. But basically, with this current configuration, we've got 50, 75, 87, 96% of our stuff is going to that main output, and the remaining 4% is going to go to storage, basically, for me, to this overflow output. And if we add another pair, I do have room to add another pair, it would go to... 98% and another pair after that would go to 99% and you can do that as much as you want for diminishing returns And as we make a bigger and bigger base that may become important. I think for this base four or five Splitter merger pairs probably gonna be fine Actually, my mental math was off a little bit in that last clip We don't end up with 96% of items to the main output with the four pairs of splitters and mergers as illustrated we end up with 93.75%. I know you're all very outraged, and you were furiously typing comments correcting me with my minor miscalculation. With the fifth pair, we end up like 97% or whatever. That doesn't really matter. The details don't matter too much. What matters is that we have a main output and an overflow output, and we can control how much goes to either one by adding additional pairs. This is an iron ore patch right there with a minor mark two. It's a pure patch which means we're going to get 240 items per minute from it, and we'll be close to filling this belt up, so we'll have a better idea what the base is going to look like under full capacity. And here comes the iron ore into the building. This layout is more or less a duplicate of the copper ore right there. The only difference is the ingots go over the copper merger line right there. 
And they run down here and they end up at a lift right next to the Copper Geis. Right here. And they get lifted up here and do pretty much the same thing the copper ingots do. They hit a splitter, and half of all of our ingots stay on this floor. They go down in that direction, and then the other half hits a lift and goes up to the next floor. The ingots on this floor have to go over all this copper stuff. So they are on this belt up at the top there. But they do a similar thing. They go down the line, and then they hit the conveyor lift, go down a level to hit all these splitters. And then they go into all these different machines. This is the iron plates right here. And on the other side, they go down the line and get merged. And they hit another one of those overflow capacity things with the splitters and mergers. We should be getting, unless something screwed up, we should be getting some ingots down here. Unless the splitter's not right. Okay, maybe we found a mistake. Let's go investigate. Okay, so apparently it doesn't like this line right here. Let's replace it. Alright, that seems to be working. I'm not sure what the issue was, but I fixed it. Anyway, that's all the iron plates down there. This guy goes up. I can't quite jump. That guy goes up to the next floor. And after it gets to the top of that lift, it ends up up here at the top of the base. At least as much of the base as has been currently constructed. And it's got to go all the way over top all of the copper stuff. So that's the copper wire. And then that's the cable right there. Once it gets past the copper stuff, it gets split in half, and it goes down to these machines to make the iron rods. The iron rods, after that point, get turned into screws. And that's as much as I've hooked up at the moment to make sure that everything works. So for the next part of the build, we actually need to unlock some new parts or buy them, I guess, whatever, from the awesome shops. We need to feed some items into the awesome sink. Most complicated things I have are smart plating and modular frames. There they go. All right, five tickets. That ticket, this one costs 9,000 points at least. We could probably speed that belt up. There we go. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's doing pretty good. All right, so as soon as these are done, I'll also feed it some other stuff. We'll see how many tickets we will get. I've got two left over from the last time. I would like to have at least 10, 10 would be good. Just let this run out, that's almost done. And then I will just give it some random stuff. I guess uh, I can give it a stack of rotors. There's the last of that. All right, let's give it a stack of rotors. Let's give it some reinforced platings. And maybe that'll be enough. Already we've got 10 tickets. And I've got two there. All right, that's probably enough for now. We can come back later. All right. So, from the awesome shop, I need a few things. First thing I need, the most important thing that I need right now are walkways. So let's put that in our cart. I've got six tickets left after that. I think I want these, the uh, the power poles that attach to the walls. Put that on the cart. And then maybe we'll go with door walls. Yeah, let's do door walls. So, checking out. Here we go. Bye, all. Bam! Did it! So, with our nice, shiny, new walkway blueprints, we are going to replace this long, thin strip of foundations with those walkways. It's going to be our viewing platform and also our storage area where we pick up building supplies. We'll have a railing here so we can look out over the waterfall. No walls, no windows, nothing like that. Just an open, unbroken view along the entire strip here. And then no railing on this side because we're going to use the walkway ramps to make a nice angled roof which will help break up the boxiness that factories tend to end up having in this game. A lot of people make really boxy factories and I would like to avoid that. There is a problem though. When I was thinking about how to design this base, uh, I was not thinking about what would happen when we turned the machines on and all the pollution. I thought it would be fine being right above these smelters, but turns out there's a lot of smoke, which is kind of ruining the view for me. And so what I think I'm going to do, and I'm kind of dreading it, but what I think I need to do 
I need to take all those smelters and I need to drop them one entire foundation. Including all the belts and all that stuff. Well, that only took several hours. Was it worth it? I don't know. Let's find out. Let's connect this guy to that guy and see what the smoke is like once all these guys power back up. Okay, smoke is definitely coming out. I offset the walls on this side from that side so that we have this nice little effect where the different angled roofs are at slightly different levels. Little detail for you. Let's jump up here. I just want to see what the smoke is like. I can't see it. Oh, our view. The view has been saved. It was worth it. So, I mentioned that this area is going to be the storage where we pick up building supplies. I think I mentioned that. And so the question is, where's the storage going to be? Doesn't look like there's space for any storage. We are going to use these guys, the storage containers. And the answer to where they're going to be is above our heads. They're going to be up here. So the first storage container will be situated kind of like this down here at the end. Let me just plop one down. I don't know if it's... Is it flush on that side? No, it's not. It's kind of centered with this, and I can uh, maybe shift them over. Once I see how it looks, maybe the first one... Uh oh The first one... No, I think the first one I want flush with that. All right, let's run back over here. Get back up there. Reposition. We need these platforms first. Maybe I should uh, do it from this perspective. Yeah, like that. I want it to be... Like that. Okay, there we go. Alright, how's that look on this side? Yeah, that looks right. Okay, so that's got an input on that side and output on that side. The orientation does matter. And I'm going to put down several. Let's do like uh, five or six. Like that. Okay, and then we are going to delete the platforms that they are resting on. So these are important. We have to place these and make sure they're placed right before we delete the platforms. And then the storage is going to be basically the roof of this level. So we're raising the roof just a little bit, which also increases the amount of view we have. Oh, isn't it nice? Can I get rid of that one? I guess I can put it back. Okay, so... The storage is going to be up there. There is a little bit of space. Let me run back over here. There's a little bit of space that I allowed a little gap that is going to be used for routing. So a little gap there so that we can route some materials. And I have a display in mind. We're going to use the conveyor lifts. Uh, where are they? Logistics. And a, a Mark 1 is fine. Because we're not going to be using this to go anywhere. This is just to display what's in the storage container. So if I have something in here, let's say that this one... This one's actually probably going to be copper sheets because that's the nearest thing to here. If it's copper sheets, the conveyor lift will... Oh, I guess it won't spit out anything there. Okay, so we need a little, like... Belt stub, basically. There. Okay, so that's the label of what's in the chest. Or the, you know, storage container thing. And we would have a similar one on all these guys. Like that. Whoops! Oh, I fell. We're gonna have a similar one like that, and each one will have a label. So we'll be able to run by and see what we need, and then basically just look up to grab the things from the container right above our head. It will stretch out the storage quite a long distance, but it's going... Oh, okay, don't fall off again. It will stretch out the storage quite a bit. This one will probably be, I don't know, wire, and then cable, etc., etc. Each one of these will need a little bit of stub, and I can't... This is something I'll have to work on, how to place this with the uh, that in the way. I might have to remove these and place them in certain ways that lets me place a little belt stub, which is just a little detail. Okay, so there, that's the label for this guy. If I want the cables, I look up into here and I click some over. And all of the overflows we've set up for all these different production lines, they are all going to end up on this row of storage containers. 
So we're going to start hooking up the different storage containers from this end and just move on down and use the closest thing getting produced so that we have the least amount of belt and so that we don't have to overlap belts and stuff. There's not a lot of space here underneath here for belts to go over top of each other or underneath each other. We basically can just have one layer of belts there. So I want to keep them going the short distance, not the long distance. So we want to route things. If they have to go a long distance horizontally, this is a big horizontal base. I want them going horizontal on these floors. And then the short distance in that little gap there. And we need a... Basically, this is what we need. We need a... Maybe I should just put this on my belt for the moment. Let's put it on four. We're going to give all of these conveyor belt Mark III, lift Mark III's. Because the overflow, once I want it to go to storage when I'm building big stuff, I need a lot of supplies. I want it delivering to the storage quickly, so it needs to go there. And then we need to hook up the other side. Nearest one to hook up is the copper sheets, which are getting made right in this line here. And this is the overflow output. I gave it a conveyor lift. And it is going to basically parallel. It's going to run right back over top of the output where it came out. And then it hit all those splitters and merger pairs for the, the main output and the overflow output. Then it needs to hit this conveyor wall like that. And then we need to... You can see that these guys don't exactly line up with the middle of each of the tiles. The tiles are a little bit wider than the storage containers, and the conveyor gaps or whatever the holes in these walls, they're only in the center or in these certain spots. So that's what this little area in the middle is going to be, just to make things line up. It gives us a little space to do that. So then we get our conveyor stacker, and I think... That looks right. That looks okay. Then we run back down here. We need to get to that interstitial layer. Oh, well, that's a fancy word. I don't get to use that very often. Interstitial layer. That's a nice one. Interstitial. Very interstitial. It's extremely interstitial, this stuff. And just to have it go straight to about there. And then hook up to that. There we go. That's our first storage. And um, that's at a weird angle or whatever. I could make it a nicer curve. After we're done setting this up, I'll never go back up there. I'm never going to see it. We're going to seal it up. It is going... Ooh, it's going to be hidden. But uh, I might do it anyway. There. Okay, here's our first storage. Bam, getting filled. Copper sheets. I've also got... I don't know if I mentioned this. I added some stairwells. I added a gap when I was laying out the smelting. I've got a gap between all the different sections. And that was for a stairwell. So we have a stairwell leading from the bottom floor here where all the smelting is getting done up here to this layer. And there is another one right here. Another one right there. So we can get down here if we need to. I can reconfigure the wiring at some point with the wall wiring mount pole things. But I think it's going to work. It's working. It was theoretical up until this very moment. But having just hooked one thing up, I think it's going to work. going to be fine. It's going to be great. And our view. Our view will be unbroken once the scaffolding is gone. So next up, we'll do the wire and the cable. The overflow for the wire is right there. And I want him to connect like that and run down that direction. The cable will go right over top of him. And I'm using a lot of these stackable conveyor guys to line things up. I will get rid of most of them eventually to have a cleaner look. But for now, it's nice to make sure that everything lines up. And if I screw something up, then I can always come back to the stackables and like modify things or whatever. So it does look a little bit more cluttered. But after we get rid of most of them, it'll look cleaner. The cable should be going down that line. I don't see it. There it is. Okay, there it is. It just showed up. All right, so those two guys. And I used the wall with the two openings because the storage guys are not as wide as the foundations. We need to keep track of where we actually are in the layout. Okay, so that needs to be the same level as that. That needs to go right next to it. 
like that. Okay, that is that part. Then we need to go to our interstitial space. Oh, I love it. Interstitial space. It's my favorite place. I didn't do the other side. Oh, maybe I should have done that. Uh, we need to be out on that scaffolding, which means we need to run back this way. And go up this scaffolding to get up to this layer. And jump over all the buildings. And my scaffolding is over here. It's pretty compact and, like, it's packed with stuff. But that's not, like, that's not the living space. That's the guts of the engine back there. It's not really intended to be um, walkable. This is the walkable part right there. Oh, it looks nice. What am I doing? Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, conveyor thingies. Like that. And like that. Okay, and it takes... Into account, when you start with the the input, it makes sure that the direction is the right way. Now we need to go back down. I need to jump over all this stuff. Go back down here. Where's my... There's my ramp. Back into this little... Our little corridor, the crawl space. Crawl space? I like interstitial. We're very interstitial today. Okay, so please do that. And, uh, is that straight? I don't know, let's just get it up and running, and then we can fiddle with things later. There we go. Alright, so that should be two more storages set up, and it's going to be kind of a similar thing doing the rest of them. Let's go check. Are we getting filled? Okay, that is getting filled at the speed of a whatever belt, tier 3. Although, we're not necessarily producing enough to compress a tier 3 belt for either of these. But there, that's pretty good. That's way faster than what we had before. But the base is basically... Uh, it's kind of up and running. More or less. I mean, we're, we're on our way. I've got to fill out the other storages. But once we have done that, we can actually start taking down parts of the starter mess out there. We still need to start making... I haven't set up any of the assemblers, so nothing that requires two ingredients has been set up. That's going to be on the, the floor that hasn't begun construction yet. But the thing works. Our storages are getting filled up from the overflow, and I've got a main output to go towards other materials for the assemblers. They require two ingredients. We'll continue this next time. That's going to do it for this episode. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. Oh... What a view! Bye-bye.